All right. Hey, everyone. This is Walker Fenton speaking, and I'm joined by my colleague uh, next to me, Brandon Gill. And we're excited to introduce you to Trackvia Integrations. A uh, little housekeeping before we get started. You're in listen-only mode. You're muted. And we are recording this webinar, and we'll send you a copy in the next day or so. Um, if you have questions, um, please submit those in the chat area. Um, as part of the uh, control panel, the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, and if we don't get to your question today, then we'll follow up later. Uh, last but not least, we have a three question survey about integrations uh, that you'll see at the end of the webinar. We encourage you to respond. Um, won't take but a minute to complete and, and it's gonna give us some feedback on uh, how you feel about integrations. So, all right, Brandon, we ready to go? Absolutely, very excited for it. All right, let's do this. What problems are we trying to solve? Um, I, I'm only going to talk for a few minutes because I really want to get to Brandon's demo. Um, but first, I want to I want to give you a little bit of the shape of the problem that we're trying to solve with uh, track the integrations. Um, uh, no app lives on an island. You all know this really well. Um, we really wanted to find a better way to help you connect track via to the other systems in your organization. Um, we wanted to make sure that this new solution supported the ease of use that you're accustomed to. But we also wanted to make sure that we could support the complexity and the security of your enterprise use cases. So we reviewed a bunch of providers in the space and found that uh, a company called Workato uh, was the best service that we could, uh, you know, partner with to meet these specific needs. And so that's that's uh, what it is behind the scenes. Um, but it's a branded version of Workato. Um, in the past, you know. What you were forced to uh, were when, when it came to integrations were forced in one of two extremes, right? You could either write scripts against the API or on the other end of the spectrum, you could use a lightweight API integration hub like a Zapier or Microsoft Flow or if this and that. And each of these has their pros and cons, um, but it, it really was that distance between these two solutions that we needed to fill. And, and so that's what we're really trying to uh, angle for with, uh, with track the integrations. So let's take a closer look at what Track Via Integrations is. Um, if there's nothing else you remember from this webinar, I, I really just want you to remember this. Track Via Integrations is easy to use with all the drag and drop goodies that you're used to with Track Via, and yet uh, advanced enough to handle the complexities of your enterprise environment. Um, Track Via Integrations, this is, Brandon, this is my tagline. Track the integrations is easy to use in your enterprise. What do you think? I like that. It's you good. Like... That's some Jay Leno type tagline. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Instead of giving you examples of this system, talking to that system, um, what I want you to do, I challenge you on the phone to look at your internal systems a little differently. I challenge you to look at uh, the symptoms for a lack of integrations. For example, um, do you have manual import expert procedures to reconcile data between the systems? Do you have duplicate data entry into different systems? Do you have data in track via that is also in another system? These are all examples of where a simple integration may solve someone in your organization significant time or save you significant dollars. And I want you to I want to invite you to think this way because if at some point in the past you wanted an integration but didn't have the resources to build or maintain it, we're really hoping that this solution um, can take those concerns off the table. So the basics of a, a, uh, an integration in tracking integrations is, is, includes two things. Um, the first is connectors. Uh, these are the systems that you want to pass data in between. Um, so Salesforce and TrackVIA or uh, Oracle and TrackVIA. Um, or you can have Salesforce, TrackVIA, Oracle. You can daisy chain them all together, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the second is called a recipe. And the recipe is what defines all the filtering, conditions, the logic to ensure that you're passing the right data in between these systems. So the list that you're seeing here is just a, a sample of the, all the connectors that are already part of the system. If there's a system that you use that isn't, doesn't yet have a connector in this list, um, we can help you get that connector in there, um, either in a public or private, whatever. There's, there's lots of options. So, um, Let's, uh, let's keep going. Um, the last slide for me um, is, is, 
is I want to dive in a little bit on the on what the complexity means. You know, as we talk about, we needed something that can handle your uh, enterprise use cases. Um, when I say we, we support complexity, we're we're talking about a few of the building blocks of a recipe, right? And so you'll see this um, in action with Brandon's uh, demo, starting with the number one, the triggers, which starts the whole process. This can be something real time. It can be scheduled. It can be batched. Um, for, for connectors, I'm just going through the numbers here. Uh, for the connectors, number two, uh, they can auto dedupe, um, support in sequence delivery. Um, for number three, you'll see, um, you'll note that we can build uh, multi stage integrations, as I mentioned before, between several different connectors. That's the, you know, Salesforce to Tractia to Oracle to whatever, right? You can daisy chain those together. And then number four tells us that. We have lots of tools in our arsenal like looping and try catch blocks and error handling. Uh, don't worry if you don't what, know what these terms mean. Um, you don't have to use any of these capabilities. I'm pointing these out as, as, as they're available to you if you need them. Um, finally, the system itself is enterprise grade, both in security, but also in best practices. Um, so we'll pass muster on any security reviews. Um, okay, I've kind of blasted through that list of slides because I really want to get to the demo. Brandon, are you ready to go? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Let's jump cool. into it. Good. So the first thing that I want to bring up here is I'm going to bring up an application within Trackvia. Uh, it's an application that we use on the solutions consulting team just to show prospects a little bit about what Trackvia is all about. Everyone on the phone, I believe, is pretty well adept to know what Trackvia is all about, so I'm not going to focus on what this application does. The important thing is the integration that we're going to focus on and the integration example I'm going to use is when we add a new customer in this application using that shortcut button, it's going to generate a contact uh, object within Salesforce. So those are the two systems we're going to be working with, and we'll cover that in a little more detail. So our two connectors in this story are Trackvia and Salesforce, and our recipe is adding a uh, contact that you've added into track data over into Salesforce automatically. Exactly. Okay. The simple add story, just connecting those two systems. Okay. Cool. So next what I want to bring up is I want to bring up the track via integrations platform. So that's what you're all looking at now. And we'll go through a couple of the concepts that Walker's been talking about with connectors and recipes and what they mean and what they look like. So what you're looking at here is four different recipes that we've got built just to showcase some different examples of what we can do. We'll cover those all in just a second here, but I want to focus again on those connectors that we've been talking about, just show you a little bit uh, more behind that. So we saw a screenshot earlier of that. Walker, how many connectors are currently available? There's like, there's like 300 in this list, um, but, uh, you know, there's, and then there's, you know, things like a generic HTTP connector. Right. So if you've got a RESTful API, you can use that one to, you know, connect to um, uh, other systems. Uh, but yeah, there's, so there's, there's, I think, a few hundred in this list. A lot of robustness, yeah. yeah. And and have we, you mentioned that with some of these connectors where we don't, maybe we, we didn't have it already. Have we built any of these connectors already? Yeah, we have actually built a couple of these connectors. I, I mentioned public-private because you can, make a connector public and put it in this uh, marketplace if you want, or you can just keep it for yourself. And the ones that we've created have, have been you know, specific for customers and behind the scenes. That's perfect. Yeah, I just like to scroll down this list when I show it to people just to show you some of the robustness. You've seen some of the bigger systems, Salesforce, SAP, but there's even things like Evernote, Expensify, we use internally here at TrackVia, so you can connect your expenses to other systems. And as we scroll down here at the bottom, you know, of course you see TrackVia in here as well. Um, the other thing about this, I think Walker's mentioned is these uh, connectors can set up in the recipe to be bi-directional, so you can push data from track via to another system or pull data from that system into track via. And as Walker mentioned, uh, the recipes can use multiple connectors when you do that. So now let's go back and talk about these recipes in a little bit more detail here. So we'll notice that I've got four of them. What I like to think of recipes are, I think Walker's mentioned this as well, is just the ways that we are going to integrate. So the connectors are like uh, your ingredients, and then we're going to use a recipe to actually make a cake. Is, is, is the, is the, you like that? I kind of like that. <laughs> we're going to make a cake in this integration. So I've got four examples here. I'll just walk you through what each of these do because they're a little bit different here. Um, the first one, of course, is the one that we're going to focus on. Adding a new record in Trackvia creates a contact object within Salesforce. 
We've, we've also put a couple together here just for example. This one down here allows you to open up a public facing web form and as you collect information on that web form, it then puts that information into TrackVIA. So if you think about it for like collecting data from non-TrackVIA users, maybe you're collecting insurance information, uh, someone fills out a web form of their claim or something like that, that can immediately go into TrackVIA. And that's actually utilizing that HTTP connector. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. So. so what's the web form connector? The What's the... the is that Wufu or is that, what is that? This is actually one that we created uh, that sits on a, a something that um, one of our software developers opened up for us on a website that just has oh, a Oh, okay, so it's just like a yeah. straight up HTML form. Exactly, yeah, yeah but Wufu is another great example. That's another one that's uh, in the in the, the connectors that you can use. So you can use Wufu to, to do a public facing yeah. form like that okay. as well. Yeah. Um, down here we've got one where if you make an update and track via to a date field, it will automatically create like a Google Calendar invite or an Outlook Calendar invite or anything like that. So that can be really handy. And then this one down here actually allows you to push uh, an SMS text message from track via uh, to your phone. So natively track via has always done email notifications. We've had asks before of doing things like text notifications, Slack notifications, things like that. That's now all very possible and frankly very easy with the integrations platform. So let's dive into a little more detail on the one we're going to focus on. That's track via to Salesforce. When we open up this recipe, what we're presented with are two concepts called a trigger and an action. And they're pretty self-explanatory. In fact, in the parentheses, they kind of tell you what's happening here. So when this happens on the trigger, do this in the action. So that's, con that's having those two connectors and they're going to do something within this recipe. Now we keep these things pretty straightforward from a demo perspective. Like I say, we're just going to add a new record in track B. It's going to create a contact in Salesforce. But as Walker mentioned, you can certainly include uh, if statement logic and looping logic, things like that. One example might be, um, you know, we're going to add a record in track B and create a contact in Salesforce. Uh, if the opportunity is under 100,000, maybe we just do that. If the opportunity is over 100,000, maybe we add that record in track B, create the contact in Salesforce, and send an SMS message to our CEO because right. it's a big opportunity for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the other the other thing I'd like to highlight is one of the capabilities that you have with the system is the ability to look up a record, you know, look up something, something happened in track via, go look up the record in Salesforce or something else and then do an update to that record. That's a that's a really um, um, specific uh, and, and complicated process generally. Um, and and these guys have made it uh, so much easier to do that, and it really differentiates from some of the other lighter weight systems um, that we were talking about, like Microsoft Flow and and Zapier and and if this and that, you know, that you don't have that kind of capability, that level of complexity that you can do with those systems, and so this is that's a great benefit to this. That's right. Yeah. So if we dive into each of these things, we'll take a look at the trigger, and. Walker's mentioned this before, and I think it's something that will really get highlighted as we go through this recipe. TrackVIA Integrations was designed with the business user in mind, as TrackVIA itself always has been. So I always like to throw it out to people. I don't have a programming background, but I was able to build these recipes, build these integrations without any knowledge of APIs or anything like that, because it's just that easy. So when we dive into the trigger, you know, it's asking us for basic information. What's the app we're starting with? What's the trigger event? We talked through the three options you have there. We're going to do this in real time. It's going to look for that application, which was a project tracking application, if you'll recall, and we're just going to add a customer. So we're looking at that default customer view. Yeah, so this is basically the setup to, um, you know, talk to that connector, and that connector is track via, and this is where you're saying, like, I want to talk to this application and, and, and get information from this view or, or, or watch this view for any changes, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then if we move down to the action, there's a little bit more here, but it's going to ask us the same basic question. So what's the app we're connecting to? What's the action we want to do? In this case, we're going to create a record. And then down here, these are all of the fields I have available to me within Salesforce. And then you'll notice some of these are filled out with some data pills coming from TrackVIA. Now, here's where we get into a little bit of that drag and drop business logic when it comes to building these things out. If I go ahead and stop this recipe, what it's going to allow me to do is pull information from this data tree on the right. And on the right, what we're seeing are all the fields that are available in track via specific to that application that I'm currently connected to. So if I wanted to add something, like maybe this account ID is the same as this customer ID, I can just drag it and drop it in there. 
You'll notice that when I do that, we've got this text option. We also have a formula option. So you can even add fields together if you've got name fields like first name, last name broken out in track via, but in the system you're connecting to, it's just one name field. You can add first name plus last name, and that's a really powerful thing as well yeah, when you're talking about connecting to other systems. Yeah, doing that data transformation on the fly is nice. Exactly. So let's go ahead and back that out just so we keep everything the same here, and I'll go ahead and restart that recipe. Yeah, so one second on that. So yeah. when you're editing a recipe, you have to stop the recipe. And then when you're executing the recipe, when it's running, you have to start it again. So That's there's right. there's notion of like, you know, stop, go, whatever, um, that you have, you know, executing a program versus not executing a program, although they've just simplified it into stop and start. Exactly, yeah, and it makes it really easy to, you know, especially with integrations, as systems change, as you add new fields in track via, as you try to connect to other systems, integrations can get tricky sometimes, with yeah. that, right? Yeah. Especially if you have those changes happening. So having that ability to stop a recipe, make those changes, knowing that that recipe is not going to continue going right. is really a good benefit yeah, that yeah, they've yeah. added. Yeah. It's very cool. simple. Good. Awesome. So what that's done now when we started that recipe is it's taken us over to this jobs tab. We're actually going to come back to this jobs tab here in just a second, but I want to walk you through these other tabs first. So whenever we have one of these recipes, we've got these tabs going here. If we take a look at the connections tab, this is showing us what systems we're connected into. So if internally at your organization you have multiple instances of a Salesforce or a Slack or something like that, that could happen at some larger organization, you can connect all those instances into uh, track the integrations, but only use specific instances for a specific recipe. And this shows you which instances you're using. So that can be really powerful as well. Right. And that's, you know, could be tied to the you got the connector plus the you know the, the the account that's used to authenticate against that system. So you might be using, you know, we just rolled out an API user last year. Like you could select a track via user as an API user and then uh, sign in to that account with that API user. Exactly. Exactly. The next thing that we have is versions. So this is really cool. It allows you to do version control on your recipe. So again, as recipes change, change, as you add new fields in, any changes that you have happen, it keeps full version control and you can always revert back. So if something happens and your recipe breaks, you're not out of the water, you don't have to rework it or anything, it actually saves all those and you can always revert back, which is really powerful, especially with something as flexible as track via. Yeah, and this is, I mean, this is huge. We never had this visibility in no. the past. And, and uh, so to have the, flexibility of like make the change and you know start it and, and see if um, or you could test it I mean, uh, yeah. first but if it uh, for whatever reason breaks in production because of one of the connectors is not um, authenticating right or whatever you can just back it out and uh, back up to a, a, a version that did work exactly yeah and then the final tab here is your settings tab so really what this allows you to do is it allows you to make the recipe that you've just made public or keep it private so we've talked a lot about public versus private um, because we're developing a small community here within track via integrations if you all make a recipe and you think hey this is really useful and i think it's something that other people that use track via and system x might get benefit out of, you can make that recipe publicly available to everyone using track via integrations, which is really cool. So it allows them to go in, see what you did, understand how you built it, and maybe build it themselves. Or of course, you can keep it private as well. Yeah, of course, they're not gonna get your uh, credentials on the connectors. Like exactly. The, the, the pub, making it public just uh, puts the skeleton of the recipe out there and then they have to fill in their you know authentication and all that goodness. Exactly. Yeah. So let's step back to that jobs tab here. This is a really cool tab. It's one that we're going to focus on throughout the rest of the demonstration. What this allows us to do is it allows us to look at all the jobs that have been run for a given recipe, and it gives us logging against those jobs. So you'll notice down here we've got this one in red. This was actually a failed job. And what's really cool about the integrations platform is if we click into it, it's going to give us all the error logging that happens. So we'll see in this case, I tried to run this integration without including the last name, and that's a field that's required on the Salesforce side. So that's why it failed. We can actually see why it failed. I had this question come up yesterday when I was giving a demonstration to one of our current customers of, can I see error logging? And we haven't been able to do this really no, well before. No, we've never been able to get this level of detail from from the uh, from the integrations frameworks that we had in the past, so this is this is hugely helpful. Yeah. So let's go back to that. Now let's actually run this example that we've been talking about a lot. So we're going to go ahead and pull up pull up track via and take a look at what happens when we actually run this integration. So let me put these two things side by side here. 
So once again, we're in our product tracking application. That's on the left-hand side here. What I'm going to do is add a new customer. It's going to take me into a form here where I can fill in some information. And on the right-hand side, I want you to focus on right here where it says waiting for new jobs. We'll just add this customer in. We'll say webinar one is the customer. Oh, I'm horrible at spelling in front of people. There we go. And we'll go ahead and hit save changes on that. When we do that, now that we've added that new customer, we'll see that it last checked at 11.20 a.m. because this is a real-time connector. It'll say it's allowing some processing for the job appears on the page. We'll actually see down here that job is already up on the page. So again, using our job ID logger here, I can step into this and I can see it took one second, 834 milliseconds, so that's pretty accurate, to run this integration. I can click into the trigger and I can see the input, I can see the output, I can see how long it took on the track via in, and we can do the same thing with the action in Salesforce. So our input's there, our output's there, and how long it took from a Salesforce perspective. Yeah, so the, the interesting thing is, is uh, which you noted you kind of flew by it, on the output tab on track via, you see that there's a couple of other fields that are available to pass, that have been passed over to the Salesforce side, but as you put together your recipe, you said, I only want these two pieces of information going over to the Salesforce side. So you were able to filter that out and, and just send over the information that was relevant to that. Um, so if you have, um, uh, you know, specifics about how you, what information is going over, you can be really, um, uh, you know, uh, precise about what that information is. Exactly. And now the final thing I'll do for everybody is let's pull over Salesforce. Let's actually see if it works. So I've got Salesforce right here. Uh, this is a Salesforce sandbox we're using, so none of the data is, is live. But if I go over to contacts, that's what we said we were going to create. There's that webinar one contact. We can click into that. And then if anyone's familiar with Salesforce, just brings us to our contact page here. We can see the information. We can see when it was created. And we can see that that integration fired and actually did work live in Salesforce there. So really cool, very quick, and very easy to do all of that setup. There's no coding required. Yeah, and then if you wanted to set up another recipe that would, uh, you know, if someone updated that information within Salesforce and you wanted that populated back into Trackia, that would be another, uh, that would be one of those update yeah. uh, recipes that you could say, like, this this uh, already exists in Trackia, take a look at it, open the record, update the information, uh, from, from uh, you know, to keep those two records in sync. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. So it's a pretty high-level uh, demonstration, but I think it's uh, still powerful to show, and hopefully everybody got a lot out of that. I think at this point we want to uh, step forward with a couple of questions. So let's bring back up PowerPoint here. Uh, if anyone has had any questions, feel free to submit those uh, into the chat. We'll still be taking those for the next few minutes, and let's open up for some Q&A. Sure. Yeah, so I see the first one um, here, which is really important. Um, it says, you already have an integrations page. Right. Very, very good point. So um, one of the things that we're doing as we're um, kind of uh, maturing our integrations framework is, is we're taking the existing integrations page and renaming it to microservices, because that's really what it is behind yeah. the scenes. The, the integrations page that we have in Trackia right now, where you write JavaScript and it's all in Node.js and you upload that, right? That's not going away. That's still in your system. Um, we are just renaming that to microservices, which is a much more appropriate name for that. So uh, the, the new integrations link is going to take you into this new system. So yes, very good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, We've got uh, another question. Is there a connector for an on-premise uh, SQL server? So there are um, ways to set up uh, connectors through on-prem. I don't know specifically about uh, SQL Server, but uh, I know that there is an on-prem connector, and, and depending on you know APIs, et cetera, um, uh, we, you know, it's something that's uh, easy to look into. Uh, so we'll have to follow up on that one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where is this located within my track via app? Oh, sorry, someone, yes, I did answer. <laughs> so you're reading uh, people's minds. But, <laughs> but, but uh, I, will, I would like to add a little bit to that. So, um, you know, so this is a, a feature that is, um, you know, there's an extra charge yeah. to this feature because we're working with a partner on this one. Um, and so when that gets turned on in your account, uh, right now it's for super admins only. 
and it will be presented in the account drop-down menu. So it's right where um, the current integrations um, and your account and your profile and, and all that goodness on the uh, on the right hand side in that upper menu um, in the account menu. So that's where this will show up, and uh, and when you click on it, it'll take you uh, into this other system. I see one question here that I think is relevant to the example we just went through. It's with Salesforce, are custom fields available in the connector? And the answer there is yes. And it's not just limited to Salesforce. So when you set up the connection with Intract V, it's actually going to look at your specific account for whatever system that you're looking for. And it'll give you automatically some of the uh, standard fields that are available, but then you have the option to add in some of those custom fields as well. So very easy to configure to your instance of Salesforce or your instance of SAP um, or whatever other system uh, is out there. Yeah, good. I see a bunch of other questions on pricing. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think just talk to your account rep for that um, uh, because we there is a pricing model and, um, and uh, and how it all works is, is you know, going to be, you know, a discussion you need to have with your account rep. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. If you already have a Work Auto account, can you access Track Via through it? Very good question. Yes. You, if you have a Work Auto account, uh, Track Via is a public connector within your Work Auto account, so you can get, you know, rolling today in uh, using Track Via to integrate with your other systems. So that's, uh, you know, that. Part of what we're doing is is uh, we're we're, um, ma we're making the, that integration kind of seamless. Um, so from Track Via to Track Via integrations is a one click. Um, behind the scenes, we're actually doing some single sign-on so that you authenticate to this other account, um, and uh, and so it's all seamless and, and put together well. Um, but if you have a if you already have a Work Auto account, then yeah, you can access Track Via from from in there. And it really makes it pretty easy for us to do because we, you mentioned the partnership earlier. We're, we're one of the first, if not the first, real partners that we're kind of done this with. Right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're one of the first OEM partners with, with Workado on this, so we're pretty excited about it. Um, uh, okay, then uh, let's see. Does the SAP connector only work with certain SAP versions? Um, you know what? Uh, there are different uh, connectors in there for SAP. Um, and uh, I don't know the specifics of the different versions of SAP, so that's something that we'll have to get back to you on. Um, and then, uh, is Zapier being replaced? So no, we are not replacing Zapier. Um, you can still use Zapier uh, if you have Zapier uh, with your account. Um, this is just a much more robust version of integrations um, that uh, uh, will supersede uh, Zapier in in functionality, right? So Zapier is still great for doing simple ad stories. You know, take information from Track Via and spit it over to something else. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, like we talked about, if you want uh, error logging, if you want um, to be able to maintain jobs and and see what jobs have run, and you want to be able to do updates in other systems, and you want to be able to daisy chain those things together, that's where you know this Track Via integrations will really differentiate from. A lighter weight system like Zapier. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, what are some of the benefits of using this connector versus something like Zapier? I think we talked about that a little bit, um, uh, and so I, I don't want to um, rehash that one. Um, and then our track the instance is AWS GovCloud. Any details? Um, you know what? That's another one that we're going to have to follow up with offline. Um, because there are some specific, you know, differences in, in, you know, whether you're in GovCloud or HIPAA or, you know, in our in our general track via um, environment. Mm -hmm. um, good, awesome. Look at that, 1129. 11 perfect we've, timing. We've uh, we've got through uh, most of the questions, and uh, I want to be sensitive to the rest of your lunch hour, and so. Yeah. Brandon, take us home. Yeah, we'd like to thank everybody for being with us today. Uh, again, my name is Brandon Gill. I was joined by Walker Fenton, our SVP of product. Um, just to re-go over some of those housekeeping things, uh, keep in mind that this webinar was recorded. Um, it will be sent out to all of all of those who were in attendance and who registered uh, in the next day or so. Um, and then that three multiple choice survey 
uh, should be coming out quickly after this. It shouldn't take very long to uh, fill that in. And also, if you have any other questions, I think Walker mentioned this a little bit in the Q&A, but if you have any other questions, any outstanding questions, if you want to see a more in-depth demo with someone from the solutions consulting team like myself or anything like that, uh, just feel free to reach out to your account exec. We're all very excited about this at TrackVIA, and they're, they'd be very excited to hop on the phone with you and uh, start that conversation. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and we'll uh, talk to you soon.